welcome back. Well, spring sprung out here. Just want to go over some basics about streamer fishing in the spring. You know, most places, most people, all they think about is fall for brown trout and hunting big streamers. And I got to tell you that almost always the biggest fish of the year comes in the spring. There's a lot of things about spring fishing that people have misconceptions about. And I want to just kind of cover a little bit. First and foremost, high dirty water is not your enemy. Don't be afraid of that stuff. And, and, and that also includes while you're nymphing. Fish do not have to see to eat. They, they can track everything that they do with their lateral line. It doesn't matter if you want a size 18 nymph, they can find it just fine. But we're gonna make it a little easier on them. Trout hunt by wavelength, right? They detect things in the water. And the thing about spring and big water and dirty water is that you get a lot of dislodgement. You get a lot of food source getting pushed down the river. Your fish are coming out of a kind of a hyperphagic stage where they haven't eaten much all winter. You know, if they have a lot of midges, maybe they've got food, but they're still looking for a feed bag. And if you think about spring, it's the same for every animal on earth. In the spring, you've got green grass, which feeds all your deer, all your birds come in, all the things happen. And the same thing is with dirty water. Dirty water is pushing bugs down, pushing everything around, and it's just making a lot of food source for your fish. So it's an optimum time for the trout to come in and just look for more food, right? They're trying to put on, put on weight early in the season. And so when you're looking at your flies, I've got a whole bunch of them up here. Uh, I've got a bunch of new D&Ds and Kill Whitey and different stuff. And I want to just go over a couple things and then I'm going to contradict myself slightly, right? But first I'm going to go over the size of the bugs. I like to have a, a bigger water pushing fly if I have any sort of dirty water. And if I have dirty water, I always match, this is just me personally, I match my water color first and that's the first thing I do, right? So if the water's tannic, like you're on the east side, east coast, anywhere back there, and you've got a tannic color water, I'm gonna go with something that matches that brown, that two-tone, that, that kind of tanny brown color. And then if it's really bright water, I'm gonna match my fly to it. It's just a starting point, that's all there is to it. But what I'm going to do on every one of these, which you're going to see, it's like on the D&Ds, uh, again, I'm not worried about the flash so much in the dirty water. I'm more worried about, like, I'm going to take something dark, right? So my two basic colors, no matter what in the spring, are black and olive. That's going to be my, kind of my general color. But then, because I'm, I'm anticipating dirty water. But if it's not there... Now I'm gonna make it a little easy on the fish. I'm gonna give them something flashy, right? And so you're gonna get into these D&Ds like that Fire Tiger or Buck Rogers colors, Johnny's Kill Whitey. And again, think about what's out there. You've got last year's rainbow trout that are now about this long, pre-par fish that are that long. If you've got any, if you're in the East Coast, you've got shad, you've got smelt. You're gonna have stuff that's shiny with a little bit bigger profile, but we're always gonna put into that some water movement, right? And so uh, one of my favorites in that mid transition, especially where we get two colors, we don't get as much of the tannic stuff in, in Montana, but in the East Coast and some on the here, but we get a little bit, you always get that greeny brown color. And I really like these tan two-tone colors. It's a, a two-tone dungeon, which has got the bigger head on it. This is one of my favorite spring flies. It's got a bigger head pushes a little bit more water. So if we've got any color to the water, we're making it easy on the fish to find the fly because they're tracking that wavelength, that, that water displacement that the head's doing, that's pushing the water around. Same with your, you know, the boogeyman, a traditional dungeon, anything like that. And again, I'm gonna have, you know, green and black all the time. That's just kind of a spring thing. And then I'm gonna have, for any color, if that's not the case, then I go just the opposite. That's why I say kind of contradictive. It's like if that water's clear, those fish are still on the hunt. They've got to, and I'm going to make it easy for them. They've got to find food, right? They've come off a long winter. So they're looking for stuff that's a substantial meal. And that's when I'm going to brighten it up. I'm going to go into the, like this Kill Whitey or, the, you know, traditional dungeon, anything like that. And then the last thing I want you to think about, because we tend to get out there and we just, 
we just do one thing. We tend to have one retrieve, one kind of fly, just need this big fly to go push water. Well, you've also got a lot of, a lot of fry in the water. You've got a lot of juvenile spring fish that are there that they're not that big. So you're going through all the colors, and I, most of you have heard my thing where I've got, I go through about a half a dozen colors, you know, white, black, tan, olive, chartreuse, blue, pink, uh, anything like that. I kind of rotate through my colors quickly. But what we don't do is we don't reduce the size of our fly. And I get asked that constantly, especially for beginner anglers. You know, can I fish a fly that's not this big? Well, hell yeah, you can. We've caught so many fish and, you know, we've kind of lost our way with the smaller fly. So I would really encourage you, like I put in here, uh, I put this little uh, barely legal in here. You could even go down to a traditional style fly. It doesn't hurt to, if you've got, they're still out there eating smaller stuff. If you've got like a Mickey Finn or a Black Nose Day, some of the traditional, uh, you know, great ghost style flies like that woolly buggers phenomenal flies right so don't be afraid to go out and change it up and that's what the big contradiction i'm going to start big always to see if i can get reactionary but if that doesn't work don't be afraid to scale it down to a traditional fly that's maybe two two and a half inches long spring's probably the best time of year if you're going to hang a real giant this is when it's going to be so get out Throw the big stuff, take a couple little ones with you, fish them across stream, and get ready. Hope you liked it. Hope it helps you out.